There's about a quarter hour of blank videotape at the end of this program. Use this space to make a video print of your child or children. Instructions about how to make this valuable identification aid are at the end of the program, or you can ask your participating video dealer for details. Thanks, kid. And now I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine. We're almost flesh and blood, you know. Mr. Henry Winkler. Hey, take a bow, Henry. Hi, I'm very glad to see you. Henry! And I'm very glad to see you. And I'm very glad to see you. And parents, I'm very happy to see you. We're all here for the same reason. We have children, and we love them. And I'm here to remind him that he was once a kid, too, like you and me, you know? This is about taking care of kids and kids taking care of themselves. We've got to share the responsibility in learning safety skills. I mean, what could be better than taking charge? So let's take charge. Hey, you're cool, huh? So here we are, parents and children together. We're going to learn about each other. We're going to learn about ourselves and what to do to prevent sexual abuse and abduction. Big words, heavy topics, but I want you kids to know this is not a big and heavy program. Matter of fact, it only weighs about a pound and a half. <laughs> now, we got a lot of surprises for you along the way, so sit there, enjoy yourself, or I'm going to run over your knees with my bike. There are a couple of friends I'd like you to meet. Key McFarlane. Hey, did I hear somebody say Key McFarlane? Terrific lady, knows what she's talking about. Close personal friend. The first job I ever had in life was working in a children's home for emotionally disturbed kids. I was in charge of six or seven little girls who I learned had all been sexually abused when they were very young. I tried to explain that to the professionals in the agencies and nobody would listen to me. They told me it wasn't true and not to believe the children. And I realized they were trying to hush me up the same way they were trying to hush up the kids. And it seems like I've spent the rest of my career trying to convince grown-ups to listen to children. And Saul Gordon, whose life's work it is to keep families family. And this is a program for families. And... No! 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 Yeah, and about 57,000 kids that were trained by the staff of the Children's Self-Help Project up in San Francisco. Don't forget Chris Wallace. And me, Marriott Hartley. Hi. Now let's try that again. A one and a two and... <laughs> Me too, John Ritter. Hey, hello. Oh! What was that? Hey! A few other friends that are going to help us out. Now listen, this is very important. You stop this program whenever you want. See, it's not made to look at like an ordinary TV show. Yeah, hey kids, you got that. I mean, you look over, you see your dad looking confused or embarrassed. Tell him to turn off the program. Look him straight in the eyeball and say, hey, you want to learn something? Because <laughs> you kids got the answer, right? You're cool. I want you to watch it. I want you to watch it over and over again. Watch it with your friends. Watch it with your family. And talk about it so that our message becomes yours. Yeah. Now, listen. You know about on. You know about off. Now we're going to get heavily into repeat. <laughs> Repeat. I like that. Repeat. All right. Repeat. The kids never talk. Nobody talks to me. I feel left out. This is a really crucial time for kids. The time when they need to be listened to, to be believed in. This is really important for their self-esteem and also important so that they'll grow up to be healthy adults. Hey. Stupid. There's lots of things you don't tell grown-ups when you're a kid. My parents don't listen to me. 
We think they wouldn't understand. It isn't fair. It's just not fair. But some things we need to tell them because they're bigger than us and they can help. <gasps> What was that? Thanks, You may be watching this program because of any number of sensational cases of child abuse or abduction that you've been hearing about. Of course, the main worry is, uh, will it happen to your child? It's the last thing we want to hear. Or the one thing we don't want to believe, so we can't hear it. That somebody has harmed or betrayed my child in a sexual way. Sometimes without meaning to do so, we... We blame the child. Here's the way it happens sometimes. Why, Why didn't you, you tell, tell me? me? I did, I did. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And sometimes in our anxiety, we, we blame the child. We say, Why, Why did, did you, you let, let him, him do it? You told me I always had to obey grown up. That's part of it. The other part is that we really have to listen more carefully to what our children are saying to us. <laughs> That's right, Baby Smurf. Always tell someone you trust. Don't keep it to yourself. If we figure out how we feel about some very important questions, it'll be a lot easier talking to our children about anything. You're on your way to becoming an askable parent. Oh, yeah, I can dig that, and I'm on my way to becoming an askable fun. I did. If you'd really like to be an askable parent, here are some ideas you might like to think about. You probably won't agree with all of them, but it doesn't matter. Give them some thought. One. Two. Three. There just aren't any taboo subjects. Four. Nothing so scary or so embarrassing that parents and kids can't talk about them. Bye. Six. Seven. There just shouldn't be any off-limit subjects. Eight. Askable, I got under control. It's edible, I'm concerned about. Excuse me. Eight. Pressure cooker. I've been thinking about the number of times I've made excuses for not saying things that I think are very important to say to my children. Kids, you should hear it from a mom. We grown-ups find all kinds of reasons to not talk to you about important things. Here are some of those reasons. Knowledge is harmful. Ignorance is harmful, not knowledge. Oh, they're not old enough to understand. That's one of the biggest myths of all. I've talked to two-year-olds who understand exactly the difference between different kinds of touching. In fact, some of the youngest children that I've heard describe Sexual abuse are the ones who know best what's happened to them. I'm embarrassed. Who isn't when they're talking about sex? It's okay to be embarrassed. That doesn't mean you have to be paralyzed. It'll give them ideas. Of course it'll give them ideas. It'll give them the ideas they need to protect them while they're growing up. Innocence should be preserved. I would gladly give up that loss of innocence in the hundreds and hundreds of children I've seen who have been harmed by their own lack of knowledge. I don't know enough myself. We're talking